Hey everybody, we wanted to do a live stream Q&A. However, our internet um, quality isn't the best where we live, so instead we, we asked you guys to send us questions on our community tab, and boy did we get questions. So we are going to answer as many of these as possible for you guys today. All right, number one from LPS Whisper. For Emily, what is the hardest part about having all the snakes? Hardest part would probably be losing them, honestly. It's a day everyone experiences when you have a pet and it's tough with the animals you have a very strong connection with. So I'd say that's probably the toughest part for me. For Ed, why don't you like being on camera? Everybody wants to know that, by the way. There were like 18 people. I just don't want to be on camera. He just doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs> Probably because he's never wearing pants. From Ellie Halverson, for Ed, why don't you like being on camera? Got that covered. For Emily, did Jeff see if that sable hognose was a girl or a boy? Did he when he was here last? I don't no, think he, said he did. he was gonna try and probe it, but then we just... Yeah, we forgot. <laughs> yep, he looked and said visually it looks like a female, which is good, but we did not actually probe it yet, so we have to do that next time he's over. And by the way, this is Cheyenne, our blue and gold macaw. She has a new sock collar, which is preventing her from plucking some of her feathers. We're trying to get something that kind of goes all the way around, because she still plucks back ah. here, but we're uh, still playing around with something she won't just tear off right away. For both of us, do you have a favorite snake? Wonder if this is snake that we currently own or snake favorite snake altogether. I'm gonna say favorite snake altogether. My favorite is probably the Western hognose snake or Plains hognose snake, just because of all the unique adaptations that they have. See, I would take that as do you have a favorite individual oh. snake? All right. Well, then what's your favorite individual probably snake? Probably Dolores. Your green tree python. Mm -hmm. That's a good choice. All right. From Jedi Kimo, Emily, what are some of your favorite Pokemon? Oh. And Ed, do you listen to heavy metal? Do you listen to heavy metal? I used to. Yeah, in high back school. In the day, yeah. <laughs> Probably not anymore. What's yeah. your favorite genre of music nowadays? I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts, uh -oh. but if I'm working out or something, I listen to mainly rap. So. Rap music? Yeah. Like Eminem. Eminem and Logic. Okay, nice, nice. Some of my favorite Pokemon. Umbreon. Umbreon's my favorite. Specifically, shiny Umbreon. There's a painting you can't see out of frame here that's of an Umbreon that is totally on our wall and Ed's gonna look at it now. Emily painted that. I did paint that. <laughs> From the dead bug for both of us. If you had never found your gateway reptile and never kept them like this, where do you think your life would be? Hmm, where would your life be, Ed? Are we considering gateway reptile or gateway reptile? Like say you didn't get into reptiles at all. I think I think because I went into college for wildlife well, fisheries and wildlife before I fell into reptiles. I think I would just be a wildlife biologist. Probably for birds, honestly. I don't think my life would have changed much. You'd still be IT? I'd still be in IT. I'd, we'd still have met over birds. Yeah, so. true, true. Emily, what is your favorite reptile to hold? Probably our twin spot albino hognose snake, Charlotte, because she's so stinking cute and chunky. From Hobby Builds, for Emily, what is the hardest part of having a loved snake pass away? Hardest part? I mean, other than the day that it happened, because that was... Un we weren't expecting, it was very unexpected, but other than that, the hardest part was probably filming that video because I had to relive the whole thing over again uh, to share that video with you guys, so that was probably the hardest part for me about Nick. For Ed, can- really? Do you want to read this one? You can't read. For Ed, can we hear you sing when this channel hits 2 million subscribers? Sing? Yeah, he was in voice choir no, all throughout his childhood. Emily's never heard me sing. I've heard you sing a little in the shower. That's about it. Yeah. If we hit, I don't know if we're ever gonna actually hit two million, but yeah. if we hit two million, would you sing? Nope. You still wouldn't? Nope. This is when you say yes to encourage people to yeah, follow. I'm fine. Nope. <laughs> nope. Sorry, guys. From Motner, if cost, safety, allergies, and everything else were no issue, what would you each pick as a dream pet? Do you have an idea? You have an answer to this one, Cheyenne? money weren't an issue. I mean, I would be tempted on a black palm cockatoo, but I really do like macaws. So if it meant I couldn't have a macaw, then I'd still stick with macaws. If you could pick any animal. Probably a dog. Really? Yeah. A Australian dog? Shepherd. An Australian Shepherd, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we can't have them because of your allergies. That's true, yeah. So, I grew up with two dogs my entire life. Yeah, so. your English setters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Blue and Ruby. From Ratty Gamer, what is, in your opinion, the most difficult reptile you have and why? Before Nick passed away, the most difficult reptile I think we had was Nearly Headless Nick because he required so much one-on-one -on -one attention to get him to eat and to make sure he was shedding properly and like doing okay overall. 
but since he passed, who would you say is our most difficult reptile? It's not Rex, surprisingly. Rex is super easy. I shouldn't say that, but we lucked out with Rex and how easy she is to take care of. See, but Rex also requires like a whole day event when we have to take care of something that she drinks. Uh, that's a good point. So when we do have to do maintenance, she's our most difficult. We just don't have to do maintenance that often. No, but when she pops her pool, when the pump goes out, when she tears up everything. That's true, we have to like rent a truck to bring a new pool home because they're too big to fit in our cars. That's a fair argument. I'll, I'll give it to you. Oh, we kind of already answered this this one a little bit, but from Sarah Jacob, Ed, do you have a job outside of snake discovery? Yes. Yes, he does. He works in IT. I am a server administrator at U.S. Bank. Yes, he works the night shift for U.S. Bank. All the techie techie stuff that I don't understand how it works, but he somehow, somehow does. Although his shift is 7.30 p.m. to 6 a.m., which sucks. Honestly. Or the next week, 5.30 to 4. Yep, it flip-flops every other week, and it's it's tough. It is tough. But we are hoping to, once we open our facility, Ed is planning on leaving that position so that we can both work at our building full-time. Okay, the second part of that was, Emily, why won't you wear your hair down? <laughs> uh, it gets in the way. My hair goes down to, like, here, and I think there's two videos where you can see it down. Right now it's kind of long because I haven't been able to get it cut in a while. I think I get it cut twice a year because it's up every day, so who cares? But it's like down to here and after a shower, after it dries, it just becomes poofy. So it's like really annoying. So that's why I don't wear it down. <laughs> and it gets really hot. I have really thick hair being a blonde and so it's just too much insulation. <laughs> From the Mad Hater, the full story of how you guys first met. So you guys have, I think there was a response to this one that answered it pretty much in a nutshell really well, but for those of you who want to know, I was working at PetSmart. I spent a lot of my life working at PetSmart, honestly, but I was only working there for like a year or so, and at this time, I was the bird nerd. I had Cheyenne and a couple other parrots, so any bird customers were kind of just deferred to me, and Ed and Brock, his dad, walked in and they had just recently gotten a blue and gold macaw named Sarge. And they needed help and how to take care of him and set up a cage and getting everything they needed. And I didn't talk to Ed at all the first time he was in the store because he couldn't talk to girls. No, whatever. <laughs> so I talked to Brock and I filled him in on everything he needed. And a few days later, they came back and they had more questions and follow-up questions, which was great. And I told them, you know, if you are really serious about birds, join, there was a local bird club back then in Minnesota, join this bird club. I'm a member too, and so you'll, there's someone you know who will be there, and you'll learn a ton. And they showed up to the next club meeting. And that's when I got to know Ed, because he wasn't as shy anymore, he's smirking in the background right now and shaking his head. <laughs> but I got to know Ed a little bit more there, and that's where we kind of hit it off. So I married a customer. From Fluff Bungle, what were the biggest mistakes or errors you made when first getting started with reptiles? We made mistakes. We definitely made a big mistake. And that was with Ed's, Athena. Yeah, Athena. Ed's first snake was an albino ball python. And she was a great, great snake. Only ate live, so kind of a picky eater. But that's, we didn't know how to convert them back then. But the mistake we made was we didn't use a thermostat along with her heat mat. And so one day we saw her and she had gotten this belly burn, which turned into an infection. And despite treatment, she did pass away from that. So that was our mistake. And that's why we're huge advocates of using a thermostat with heat mats nowadays, because we don't want that to happen to anybody else. So that was the biggest mistake we made, you think? Probably. Yeah, probably. Also Use thermostats. Oh, getting wild caught? Yeah. yeah, that's true. We have taken a, we've rolled the dice a couple times on some wild caught animals like the blonde hog noses we had a long time ago. And they just didn't thrive. They never uh, acclimated to captivity. So now we strive to get captive bred animals. I mean, whenever possible, honestly. From random person. From a random person. Have you ever had any crazy buyers when it comes to selling your baby snakes? Like people demanding one for free or scammers, etc. I can think of one. Can you think of any crazy buyers? Okay, so the one that comes to mind for me, crazy selling experience, it wasn't really that crazy, but we had someone who wanted to buy, I think it was one of our like morph bull snakes back in the day, and she requested that we don't write anything on the box when we shipped it to her. And it is federal law to include the species name, the quantity, the species scientific name, and live harmless reptiles on the box. So it is very clearly labeled. And she said she didn't want any of that labeled on the box because she was worried that someone would see live snake and shake it or hurt it in some way, which I understand, but 
she refused to buy it unless I didn't mark the box. So that was illegal. So we did not go through with that sale. From Marsha, how badly has the pandemic slowed down progress with your building? Will there, will there still be a grand opening this year? <sighs> Maybe. <laughs> I hope so. The original plan was, I know, it's, it's upsetting, Cheyenne. Thanks to the pandemic, all of the construction has been put on hold at our building. So everything is torn apart but we can't get our building permit approved until the city reopens and our construction workers can't do work anyway because of the stay-at-home orders we have in both Wisconsin and Minnesota. So it's been difficult. Everything is on hold right now and we don't know how long it's gonna last. We originally planned on having a grand opening in mid-June because everything was on track. We knew what the process was going to be and the, um, the timelines, but with COVID, I don't know when it's gonna be. I hope the stay-at-home orders will end at the beginning of May, like they say they will, but I don't know, they might get extended. So hopefully July or August we now have a grand opening, but as soon as things lift up, we're gonna get going again, because we want to open. We want Ed to leave his night shift job, and I, I want to open it too. From SSOS Silver Rose, for Emily, when did you start liking reptiles? And for Ed, do you think you like snakes more than Emily? No. No? You think I like them more? Yep. Emily goes full in on things, and she does it for years and years and years. Ed goes in 70%, <laughs> and then bounces a guy. between many, many different things. He's the guy, your typical guy, but you still like snakes. Uh, me, when did you start liking reptiles? That was when, well, I started like having an appreciation for them when I started working at PetSmart, because I had to learn how to care for all the animals so I could help out customers. Reptiles though, like actually really enjoying them and wanting one of my own, that probably happened when Ed got his albino ball python Athena from Anxiety Fish. One, how are you doing? We're doing quite well, all things considered. I mean, other than construction being put on hold, everything else is going quite well in our lives and being at home a lot more because I have no programs is awesome because I get to spend more time with her. I get to clean and revamp enclosures at home. We've cleaned so much of our house. Other than this dry cough and fever I've got, yeah, you know, just fine. He lost his sense of smell and his sense of taste. I don't know what's going on there. Number Jokes. two. Jokes. Jokes. Completely joking, 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 joking. How are the green, you're gonna, don't pick my nose. How are the green tree pythons doing? Good. Good. We thought one was gravid because she was looking quite plump. And then she pooped. And then it was just poop. Where did you buy finch eggs for your baby egg eaters? When we bred those, finch eggs we got from people we knew in the bird community who raised finches and they just had extra eggs so we totally lucked out with that connection. But if you join the egg eating snakes group on Facebook, there is someone on there who sells finch eggs and ships them, so. FYI. Would you get more birds? Cheyenne is our one one bird we have right now, but yes, we are planning on eventually down the line, we are being willed a hyacinth macaw, which is my dream bird. At least I think this plan is still us being willed the hyacinth. He hasn't said anything, so. Yeah, I believe that's still what he's planning on doing, but we do want two macaws. I like having two macaws, but I don't want to get another one if I can't have three like if we get the hyacinth later on. So just Cheyenne for now, but eventually one day we will have, I think, a hyacinth, which is my dream bird. Number five, how are your new snakes doing? Let me go grab them. Here's our green anaconda. He is still a little untrustworthy, so we'll see how he does here. He's really wet because he pooped in his water dish, which is a really big water dish because they love to soak. He honestly spends about 90% of his time in the water. And he pooped in it, so I had to give him a bath. So he's nice and clean. I think he's going into shed because he's really dark right now. And that actually might be to our benefit because he might be less likely to want to try to eat my arm. So yes, Anaconda's doing well, Black-Headed Python's doing well. We have a couple other newer ones, but you haven't seen their unboxing videos yet, so I can't tell you about them. But yeah, the ones you know about are doing very well. And finally, from Anxiety Fish, what would you do if Rex unfortunately passed away? Well, I think at that time we would have a big enclosure for her at our facility. So we would look for another rescue crocodilian of sorts since that enclosure would be set up for one. Maybe like a caiman? I would love a caiman. I think that'd be cool. What do you yeah. think? You would we like have enough connections in the reptile world that there's always crocodilian rescues, mm -hmm. unfortunately, because mm -hmm. people get them and they go, well, I like it now, but when it gets to be six feet, I don't know what to do with it, so I'm just gonna give it to a rescue. Yeah, just assuming they'll take it in. Yep. 
Yeah, all zoos will take in crocodilians. I'm going to go give it to a zoo. Yeah. Even every person who brings an alligator to a zoo, the zoo goes, no, go away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we can't give Rex to a zoo. Is zoos don't want her. She's not socialized with other gators. And she's stunted and has some other chronic health issues from it. So people have wondered that. Like, why don't we give Rex to a zoo? But we, we, we can't, basically, no. because of her past. But... I would be tempted to have her skeleton articulated. I don't know what Ed thinks about this. Yeah. You'd be game for that? Yeah. Especially her skull with mm -hmm. like the deformities. So an articulated skeleton means that all the bones are put into place so you can see the animal skeleton as it would stand if it were alive. And I would like to do that with Rex just to use it as an educational tool. But hopefully we don't have to cross that path anytime soon. All right, from Rebecca Hartman. When you filmed the video of Rex in the pet store, did she freak out any customers or workers by being there? Okay, behind the scenes. We called that PetSmart because I used to work with several of the employees. Don't look at my hand like that, buddy. I called and asked if it'd be okay first off, and Nancy, who was my manager back in the day, and who's the one who showed up in that video, she was all for it. They asked to hold Rex afterwards, so all the employees that wanted to got to hold Rex after we were done filming. So they were all cool with it. Rex did really well during that video. There were some customers, however, who did a double take. There was a young boy who was like constantly picking out toys to give to Rex. It's like, no, 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 that's you know that's me. Right. Yeah, giving yeah. Rex these toys that wouldn't be appropriate, but he meant well. Would you ever think of owning a venomous snake, say a cobra? Yes, we are considering it. At our facility, we are setting aside two enclosures specifically for a timber rattlesnake and an eastern massasauga, which are the two venomous species to our area. And we would like one of each just to teach people more about them because we think if we could raise awareness about them and the benefits of having rattlesnakes in the area, like for rodent control, fewer will be killed um, in the wild. So we are going to apply for a permit for those species, but I don't think we need anything else venomous. Like a maybe cobra, a creature, I don't think we me I think a bush viper would be adorable, yeah. but I know I'm not ready for one right now. From No Name Lollipod, will your building, when it's done, be interactive? Like, will people who come to see the animals be able to touch and hold them? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, not the venomous stuff, but everything else, yes, that's friendly anyway. At my programs that I bring to libraries and scouts and birthday parties, it is all about the hands-on opportunities that kids get with reptiles, because I think that's how you get over fears, and you realize that they're not scary. They're not slimy, first off. They feel like a basketball, you know? I think that's how people can have the best, most positive learning experience with reptiles is by interacting with them. So yes, we are. We have several plans in mind on keeping the facility and the classroom and even retail interactive. From Lindsay McGregor, are all of your snakes going to live at the zoo building? Do you think your house is going to feel empty or weird without them? Also, are you going to do all of the caring for them or will you hire people to help? Okay, multiple part question. Yes, we are planning on moving pretty much everything we own to the facility, minus Maybe quarantine. We'll use our house for quarantine purposes because that's a good separate location. But it will be a weird feeling having an empty house. Cheyenne will probably live at home too though. We'll have her cage at home and we'll drive her back and forth to the shop to spend the day with us and then back here to sleep. What are we gonna do with the, the snake rooms? I think we'll just keep them empty. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what we're we gonna do. We just wanna move eventually out of a neighborhood. That's true, yeah. We would like to move to somewhere with more land, so we'll probably keep the house as empty as possible until that happens. Oh, and for caring for the animals, yeah, we are planning on hiring people, but probably not right away. But yeah, that'll, that'll come down the line. Mm -hmm. From Tristan Simpson, since age is out of the question, how long have you been married for and how old were you when you got married? Married six years. I was, I was 24. I was 23. Three. No, 22. 22. So I think oh, you were 23. 22. Okay. Yeah. Within a month, we moved into the house and got married. It was a crazy fall. From Moonlight the Fox, for Emily, what is the worst bite you have ever gotten from an animal? I still have a scar on my uh, hand here. This is an, an iguana bite from an iguana we no longer have. His name was Spock. He was a rescue. The other bites I have are right here. I have two scars on my lower lip from a green wing macaw that I used to own. Ironically, his name was Buddy. So what happened was he only had a couple toes, so we had balancing issues, and he slipped on my arm once and grabbed wherever he could for support, and he happened to grab my lower lip, and he tore it open. So we went to the um, emergency room. I don't think it was an emergency room. Maybe it was. We went to the hospital right away. It was like 10 o'clock at night and they used some special kind of glue to glue my lip back together. And then it happened again like two months later on the other side, which completes the U. Those are two separate bites. It happened again, and I figured they just used super glue. So that time, 
I just used my own super glue and I glued it back together. So I don't know how sanitary that was, but it worked. I think you can't. Same thing. Yeah, you can't really. You can kind of see them a little yeah. bit, but that's about it. Uh, from Blazing Legend. Other than being animal parents, what are your hobbies? Hobbies. What's a hobby? Do yeah, people have time for hobbies? hobbies? I mean, we breed snakes. That's kind of a hobby. I guess free time. I don't know what sleep. free time is. I try to sleep a little. Mm, I'd say for you, it's video games. Yeah. Is your hobby for me? I force you into video games every once in a while. You do. You do. Yeah. I just started playing Animal Crossing uh, yep. for the very first time, the newest one. But I really like the Pokemon games, except for Sun and Moon. Yeah. I was she still not. Beaten sword. Oh wait, yeah, I'm still working on Sword. I would have played it if I hadn't started Animal Crossing. That's true. From Gabrielle Pryor, what type of music do you listen to? Also, have you ever considered getting a dog, cat, or rodent? We uh, have a lot of rodents. We have a ton of rodents in our freezer. But a, also, tons have, of rodents in our garage. Yeah, we, have, we breed rodents, rats, and mice for our, for our snakes. We, since we're, we have to breed them anyway, we breed like fancy varieties like Dumbos and Hairless and Rex and Double Rex or Patchwork. Fun stuff. We do offer them up for sale as pets too. Yeah, the really cute ones we either hold back for breeding or we um, rehome as pets because they're just too cute to use as feeders. So we have fun with rodent breeding, but we don't have dogs or cats. I'm allergic. If I wasn't though, Ed would totally have a dog. There's still a possible dog in the future. He might still get one anyway. Yeah. When Emily stayed with me and my family with two English setters, she got better with the dogs. I did. I did so get better. I have this feeling if I get <laughs> one and she loves it, you know. Uh, oh, what type of music do you listen to? If I had to choose bands in particular, Queen and Gorillaz are my absolute favorite bands. I like Gorillaz. Gorillaz, yeah. I'm going to put him back for the last little bit here because he is actually doing really well, but he's kind of boring. So I'm going to grab Cheyenne. Okay, last few questions with Cheyenne, uh -huh. the stinker. From Flash Flood the Hybrid, what are some of the stupidest questions you've been asked? Not in this Q&A, but in general. Does it bite? Does it bite? Is it poisonous? Yeah, oh, that's a good one too. Yeah, is it real? <laughs> or does it talk? With Cheyenne all the time. Oh my gosh. If you see a bird owner, don't ask them if it talks. They get that all the time. Yes, it can talk, but she won't talk on cue. Most likely will be the answer. How about you? You say hi and hello, but never on command. Those are probably the dumbest questions. I mean, there is no such thing as a bad question, except for maybe those. From I play Minecraft. What other reptile YouTube channels do you watch? I guess reptiles specifically, I watch Clint's Reptiles. I learn things all the time from Clint's Reptiles. I watch Dave Coffin's Reptile Adventures. I love his herping videos. Um, those are probably the two we most regularly watch. I mean, I watch bits and pieces of others like Tyler Ruggie, I like him. Channels in general though, I like Good Mythical Morning. Rhett and Link would be awesome to meet someday. How about you? Yeah, come on, Rhett and Link. Come on guys, Invite we can bring you channel. snakes. Even I can drive there, we can drive there. Oh, we'd make a road trip. Yeah, we would bring you snakes. You could meet Rex if you want. And we don't offer that to everybody. What channels do you like? I know what you like. We like Odd Ones Out. Yeah, Rooster Teeth. Rooster Teeth. Ed is huge into Rooster Teeth. Yeah. Yes. That's not appropriate for kids, though. So sorry, no, don't look not. it up, kids. They're all going to look it up now. Yeah. From JJ Schlockfeld. Schlockfeld? How tall are you guys? Six, two, six, two. I think I you're think. six, two. I'm five, eleven. Okay, last question. <laughs> From, I know, it's so exciting. You want to read this one? What does it say? You don't know what it says. Uh, from 3173 Triangle. I had a question in mind. Since Rex means king in Latin, it isn't a very girly name. I know you're all used to calling her that now, but if you knew from the beginning, what would you name her? Also, who called her that in the first place? The previous owner or you? <laughs> uh, previous owner named her Rex. So we kept it Rex because they can learn their name. Alligators can learn their name. So we... she knows her name. She does know her name. Yeah, you call Rex. And she perks up right away. Uh -huh. Food? She looks at you like, yeah. you're here, give me food. Yeah, she totally expects food. Uh, what would you name her? That's what it was. What would you name Rex? I don't know what I'd name an alligator. I'd never thought of that before. Diva? Sassy pants? I mean... Hi. Stinky? No, we call Cheyenne Stinky. We call my mom's dog Stinky, too. Yeah, that's true. Stinky's our default for pet names, for yeah. nicknames. Bitey. Bitey's probably one of those ones that's up there for quite a bit of alligators. <laughs> probably. <laughs> all right, well, we're going to leave it there. That is all the questions on these two pages. There were a lot more, too, but I think this is probably enough. I don't want you to get bored. Thank you guys so much for watching and for submitting all of these awesome questions. 
We, may, I mean, depending on how long quarantine lasts, maybe we'll do it again. I don't know. Or maybe another live stream. That was fun. Yeah, wasn't it? That was fun. Thank you to all of the Patreon backers for supporting this channel. We love each and every one of you. Your contributions mean so much. And we love everybody who just watches our videos. So thank you, everybody. We love you. And we'll see you next time.